And this was completely a disaster. I was able to see all the filament going everywhere, but I'm glad I didn't stop this print. And that's what I'm going to talk about today, how I kind of fix it and paint this piece that I kind of fell, but it didn't. So remember this and sculpting channel, but I do 3D printing, so let's start. I was having a problem with this printer just because I have it in a place that is really cold. And I just sent this mask. This was just a test. I know that probably wasn't going to really, really work. I had my slicer put the automatic support, which I think it put too many. But I just let it print and waited. Now, after a few hours, I came back and it was printing the base. I have to say, because I was tweaking the settings, I put a little bit too hot temperature that it should be. And I saw, compared to other prints, too many of these kind of webs or strings, but it was working, it was printing. So I didn't care much. I saw one of the supports kind of moving too much. So I thought that probably wasn't gonna really, really stay on the bed. And probably that happened. When I came back, I saw this bowl of spaghetti but it looks horrible, all that messy strings were everywhere and I had it in my mind, it fell, I need to stop the printer and figure out what happened. But when I did a closer inspection, I saw that yes, the supports inside, they fell. There was like four or five that completely detached from the bed and they were even upside down. Some part didn't really print, but I saw that the walls of the mask were kind of working, were being printed. With my experience on resin tray printer, I knew that usually when you have walls or this type of mask, you don't need, really need a lot of support. The only thing you need more when you're printing faces is supports around the eyes, the nose, and probably the chin. Of course, everything depends how you position your piece, but it had a really big chunk. Pretty much all the eyes, nose, and mouth was already done. So it was just about to wait for the rest. So I said, okay, I'm gonna just leave it there. I know because the support, even if they fail, there's no way to cancel just the support. So it will be still printing those supports. And that's why you have so much strings everywhere. I decided just to let it go and just keep printing. So later I came back after some hours and I was able to see how it was closing. I could see all those spaghetti things and I said, well, maybe it's gonna give some problems more at the end when it's trying to close that gap. And to be honest, yes, it has a lot of defects. It had tiny pieces sticking out. You can see layers didn't close completely. So, and I know that's because of that spaghetti inside the helmet. But I had a full one and it was done. So I was so happy. So it was kind of time to clean. I, I removed so many things inside. I thought I was never going to be done. Something that really happened is that uh, all those filaments, all that spaghetti, kind of part of it got glue uh, at the time that uh, it was closing the mask. So when it creates all the layers to create the mask, all those tiny things just stay all the way on top of the helmet. And uh, because it's not visible, it's not really a big deal. I tried to remove them. I did remove a little bit, but it wasn't just enough. So one of the things that happen sometimes with your pieces is that you have tiny plastic sticking out. Of course, this was a fail. But so when it, you have a strings, more than it really, really thin. These are a little bit thicker because it was a fail. You can use fire to fix those strings. And that's what I did, no? The really thin ones that probably the camera won't detect, they're gone like they were never there. So it's a really good way to clean your print. Another thing that happened to me and I wasn't aware about this material is that when it actually was cleaning, when I was cleaning and going over with the flame, I didn't pay attention and some of the flames actually stay in this material. No, it's melting, but it's keeping the combustion and it just keep melting and melting. It actually part of the nose, it was melting, 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 and it create this kind of hole. And I wasn't ready to repair. I wasn't ready to really, really fix this print. Usually I will have like my spatula that I use to work on my sculpture. That one is just pretty good to push the material and probably spread that plastic that is metal so it can handle if it is too hot or not. So to really do a better job, it will be to have a torch 
those ones is just a little bit faster and more powerful. But I was able just to grab a piece of my filament. I just cut it a tiny piece and I was able just to melt it and fix that nose. I was just surprised how easy it was. And if I would have had my tools and everything, I would have been able to fix it really, really well. Over here, you're gonna see a little bit of a cap. I could have put more of the filament there and then sand it and it would have turned out perfect. So I went over my helmet and I saw those tiny sticky things and things that the fire didn't really was able to fix. To be honest, instead of the fire, you can also use pliers and try to remove things. But in this case, I don't have a lot of good paper for sanding. The best thing will be to be sanding for like five hours. Good if you have running water, but also try different grades of sanding paper. You can start with the biggest and then go smaller later. But I didn't do that. I didn't have the time. The only time that I could put was 10 minutes. I still, I have to say that I was surprised how smooth it was comparing to before where I can see all those sticky things. And YouTube sent me a lot of videos, people just painting their helmet or their piece and saying, don't worry, you don't have to sand it. And then I wanted to use a paint that actually, it worked like having to cancel spray, or at least that's what they claim. Basically, it's having the prime in the regular paint because this was a black filament and I don't really have a lot of light here where I am. I didn't realize that it has actually a lot of defects. They were horrible. And just the first coat of paint, it revealed every single defect. Since that moment that I put the first layer of color, you were able to see every single line, every single defect. That showed me that I, I needed a lot of post-processing to create like a really, really good helmet. So even if you can see the lines, and I've seen some people that actually use the helmet, people that even if they have put a coat of paint, they will sand that paint and slowly get rid of those lines because you can really, really notice, even if it is smooth, even if you can see that shininess, uh, it looked amazing, it feels strong, and uh, the only downside is yeah, I can see all the defects that I could have done it before, but I still know I'm happy that I did this, so you remember this and sculpting channel, and if you want to support my channel so I can make more videos and better and more often, Please check my links, get one of my books or buy me a coffee. Thank you and see you next time.